Hello friends, in the last video, we talked about interference of light, phase and path length. In this video, we will take a glance on the Young's double slit experiment. So in 1801, Thomas Young reported his experiment on the interference of light. He took a cardboard and punched a pinhole in it. He punched another two holes in another cardboard. These two cardboards were kept symmetrically. Sunlight was allowed to fall on the first cardboard. So according to Huygens' principle, this pinhole acted as a source of light. Now the waves from this source were allowed to fall on the second cardboard. And therefore, the two pinholes on the second cardboard also acted as sources of light. A screen was placed at some distance from the cardboard parallel to it. Due to the superposition of these two waves at different points on the screen, an interference pattern was observed. This interference pattern is in the shape of dark and bright strips. These dark and bright strips signify a variation in intensity of the resultant wave. Since sunlight is a combination of light of different wavelengths, the interference pattern observed was not sharp. So a sharp interference pattern can be observed if we use light of single wavelength instead of sunlight. In the double slit experiment, instead of the two pinholes, we use long narrow slits. These long narrow slits are illuminated by a monochromatic parallel beam of light. Light coming out of these two slits are intercepted on a screen placed parallel to the plane of the two slits. The interference pattern observed in such a case is in the shape of bright and dark strips. These dark and bright strips are called fringes. So let us say that the wavelength of the source of light is given by lambda. Its angular frequency is given by omega. The two slits are called S1 and S2 and the distance between these two slits is given by small d. The distance between the two slits and the screen is given by capital D. Consider a point capital P on the screen. The waves from S1 and S2 interfere at point P. So the wave travelling from S1 reaches P and travels a distance of S1P, which can be written as X. Similarly, the wave travelling from S2 reaches P, travelling a distance equal to S2P, which can be written as X plus delta X. Therefore, the path length difference between these two waves can be given by delta X. The electric field at point P from the two sources S1 and S2 individually can be written as E1 is equal to E01 sin Kx minus omega t and E2 is equal to E02 sin Kx plus delta x minus omega t. So E2 can be written as E02 sin Kx minus omega t plus phi. Here phi is written as k delta x, which is the phase difference between these two waves. E01 and E02 are the amplitudes of the two waves from sources S1 and S2 reaching point P. We have taken them as different to keep the two equations generalized. So the resultant of these two waves at point P can be given by the vector addition method or the phasor method and it is equal to E is equal to E0 sin Kx minus omega t plus epsilon, where E0 square can be given as E0 1 square plus E0 2 square plus E0 1 E0 2 cos phi, and tan of epsilon can be given by E0 2 sin phi divided by E0 1 plus E0 2 cos phi. For a bright fringe, the value of E0 should be maximum. Therefore, cos phi should be maximum, which has a maximum value of 1. Therefore, phi is equal to 2n pi. This can also be expressed in terms of path length difference. Now, phase difference is equal to 
2 pi by lambda delta x, which is equal to 2 n pi. So, delta x, the path length difference can be written as n lambda. For a dark fringe, the value of E0 should be minimum. Therefore, cos phi should be minimum, which has a minimum value of minus 1. So, the value of phi is 2 n plus 1 times pi. This can also be expressed in terms of path length difference. Since phase difference is equal to 2 pi by lambda delta x, which is equal to 2 n plus 1 pi, the path length difference delta x can be written as n plus half times lambda. Now let us take a look at the schematic diagram of the double slit experiment. Construct the midpoint of the two slits S1 and S2 as O. Draw a perpendicular from O to the screen and mark the intersection point as B. Assume that the separation between the two slits and the screen, which is capital D, is way greater than the separation between the two slits, small d. With this separation, we can say that S1P and S2P are almost parallel. Now construct a perpendicular from S1 to S2P and mark the intersection point as A. The line S1A is perpendicular to S1P, S2P as well as OP because the separation between the two slits D is way smaller than the separation between the two slits and the screen which is capital D. With basic geometry, it can be proved that the angle S2S1A is equal to the angle POB. Let us mark it as theta. The path length difference delta x can be written as S2P minus S1P, which is written as S2P minus AP. And it can also be written as S2A, which is nothing else but D sin theta. Use basic trigonometry. Now, since theta is a small angle, sin theta can be written as tan theta. Therefore, the path difference is written as d tan theta. Here, tan theta is equal to y by d. Therefore, the path length difference can be written as dy by d. So, for a bright fringe, the path length difference can be written as delta x is equal to n lambda, which is equal to y small d by capital D. Therefore, y is equal to n lambda capital D by small d. When n is equal to 0, the central maxima occurs. When n is equal to 1, y is equal to lambda capital D by small d, which is the first bright fringe. The distance between two consecutive bright fringes or two consecutive dark fringes is called the fringe width. Therefore, in this case, the fringe width can be written as lambda capital D by small d. So, for a dark fringe, the path length difference can be written as n plus half lambda and it is also equal to y small d by capital D. Therefore, the value of y is equal to n plus half lambda capital D by small d. So, when n is equal to 0, the first dark fringe occurs at lambda capital D by 2 small d. And when n is equal to 1, the second dark fringe occurs at 3 lambda capital D by 2 small d. Now let us talk about the intensity of the resultant pattern on the screen. For a special case, when the amplitude of the two slit sources is same and written as E0 dash, then the square of the amplitude of the resultant wave can be written as E0 square is equal to 2 E0 dash square cos phi plus 1. So the intensity of a light wave is proportional to the square of the amplitude of the light wave. If we consider the intensity due to individual slits to be I dash, then the intensity of the resultant wave can be written as 2 I dash cos phi plus 1. So the maximum intensity occurs at a value cos phi is equal to plus 1 and the value of the maximum intensity is equal to 4 i dash. Similarly, the minimum intensity occurs at a value for cos phi is equal to minus 1 
and the value of the minimum intensity is equal to 0. Well folks, in this video, we talked about the Young's double slit experiment. In the next video, we will talk about optical path length. Well, that is it for this video. We will summarize and I will see you next time. In a double slit experiment, the electric field at a point on the screen due to the two slits can be written as E1 is equal to E01 sin Kx minus omega t E2 is equal to E02 sin Kx minus omega t plus phi where phi is the phase difference between the two waves intersecting at P and phi can also be written as K delta x where delta x is the path length difference. The resultant of these two waves is E is equal to E0 sin Kx minus omega t plus epsilon where E0 square can be written as E0 1 square plus E0 2 square plus 2 E0 1 E0 2 cos phi and tan epsilon can be written as E0 2 sin phi divided by E0 1 plus E0 2 cos phi. For bright fringes, phi is equal to 2 n pi and delta x is equal to n lambda. Therefore, y is equal to n lambda capital D by small d, where n is an integer. At n equal to 0, the central maxima occurs, while at n equal to 1, the first bright fringe occurs at y is equal to lambda capital D by small d. For dark fringes, phi is equal to 2n plus 1 times pi, and delta x is equal to n plus half times lambda. Therefore, y is equal to n plus half times lambda capital D by small d. Therefore, for n is equal to 0, the first dark fringe occurs at lambda capital D by 2 small d. Similarly, at n is equal to 1, the second dark fringe occurs at 3 lambda capital D by 2 small d. The distance between two consecutive bright fringes or two consecutive dark fringes is called the fringe width. The fringe width has a value of lambda capital D by small d.